Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night, 10, 17 p.m. That's California time here. Feb uh, February 15, 2025 is the date. A little 1.0 across the Alaska area. One of the latest quakes. Also a 4.6 between Russia and Alaska up here. A little odd quake, but uh, occasionally we'll get some earthquake activity out there around this region. And that earthquake coming in is a 4.2. As uh, far as California activity goes, let's go ahead and see what's going on down here across Southern California. Getting a little swarming on the San Andreas Fault once again, the southern branch. Almost looks like it's in that same area that had uh, some earthquake activity here recently within the last week or so. I believe that's it. Let's see. Yeah, same location here. So we're up to about 30 earthquakes now. Um, and it was a couple days ago on the 10th here, about five days ago. We had a number of three-pointers, some ones and twos in there as well. Uh, and tonight, looks like we're starting to see a swarm back on that area of the San Andreas Fault. So we've got to watch that pretty closely. Not too often do we see earthquake swarms on this section of the San Andreas Fault. It, it definitely could mean that something here is uh, about ready to break loose, so to speak. We'll definitely keep an eye on it with this elevated activity we've seen here across California recently. It's a good idea to uh, be on guard here. A little bit of movement on the San Jacinto Fault Zone as well. Uh, looks like a 3.5 and a couple other smaller quakes throughout the afternoon. Um, one pointer, Octello Wells region. Over here across Malibu, this was kicking up this morning. 3.7 and a 3.5, a couple other ones in there as well. Just an overall pattern here, folks, of elevated seismic activity across the California region. That goes for up around the Bay Area as well. Remember that swarm out here across the Hayward Vault? Well, we've got one little earthquake today on it as well, a 2.4. But that's the only earthquake showing up here in this sequence of events for today. Uh, but over the last few days there, as you can see, a number of threes and a number of twos as well. This is just another location there across California that's been seeing elevated, increasing seismic activity. Not to mention up here across Northern California and the southern end of the Cascadia Mega Thrust area. I know it sounds scary. It is. It's definitely scary. Um, and it will unleash a beast one day. Not a monster coming up from the ground, but... Uh, in a, in a sense of a monster, this thing will produce uh, a full rupture, be over a 9.0. Uh, partial rupture down here could be up to an 8.4, 8.5 magnitude earthquake for for the southern segment of the San Andre or the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. 2.7 this morning. Since then, a number of twos, upper twos here, down south here across the plate boundary. Uh, another area that's been seeing seismic uptick uh, recently. So we'll see how this plays out here, folks. A number of earthquakes on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault as well. Also on the uh, southern end of the Parkfield section, 2.4 this morning. There's been a little chat amongst the science, uh, scientific community there that, uh, you know, an earthquake on this Parkfield segment could trigger uh, and uh, create a domino effect here in the well-strained area of the San Andreas Fault, resulting in a, a major rupture here of that plate boundary. Got to watch that because this area of the park field or of the San Andreas Fault here, the park field segment, is uh, coming up on the regular intervals where we see a six-pointer every 20 to 22 years. Last one, 2004. Put the math together. but Do the math. Pretty simple right there. We're coming up on that time period here where we'll see uh, another six-pointer, and that could be the trigger or the straw that breaks the camel's back, right? Nothing else going on across the North Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet Yellowstone National Park as well. Notice the USGS is working on the bat, uh, ma uh, map backgrounds as they are uh, a little... Uh, looks like this one's working good uh, as far as being able to zoom in. Uh, we're still missing our other type of layout here but at least they got this one working so where we can zoom in a little bit and actually see the uh, land here uh, Yellowstone yeah let's see uh, let's see what we got going on here for the Yellowstone area and then we'll get to space weather activity also cover the Santorini 
Greece region. Uh, we got some wind events earlier. It looks like it kicked up here across the Yellowstone National Park in the dark blue. But earthquake activity, pretty much non-existent. Uh, that I was looking at a scenario here for a 7.8 on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. It can get much bigger than that. But that's the uh, shake contours there. Uh, definitely going to be some damage out there in that region. Interesting uh, little scenarios that the USGS put out. Uh, Texas area still got... Uh, what's going on here now? Hold on a second here. What? <laughs> hey, they got the western U.S. looking good, right? In terms of being able to zoom in. It looks normal. East here, it's all like a road map. Like we're going to take a road map out here or road trip somewhere. But then when you zoom in, uh, yeah, they're working on it. So at least I can say they're working on it. Uh, Texas oil fields out here getting hit. That uh, area that had a five-pointer yesterday, quite a few more earthquakes out there. This is a, a big location here for a lot of oil fields out there outside of Pecos, Texas. Permian Basin region, big time oil fields. Down here south of San Antonio as well. Someone said there may be some fault systems out here, and, and that may be true. But the majority of these earthquakes occurring out in Texas are related to the oil fields, fracking operations, and wastewater disposal uh, processes. The rest of the country, pretty quiet out there. Nothing major going on across the east. Let's go ahead and check out the Santorini area there in Greece. Um, nothing showing up here on the USGS map. A 4.9 early this morning, way up north here, uh, northern Aegean Sea. But let's check out the uh, Raspberry Shake data station here. See what we got for earthquake activity. A little localized earthquake there. That, uh, let's see where that's at here. Could it be a 2.1? I, I don't think it's that one. 2.1, TNC 2.9. That's interesting, getting some earthquake activity way up north here, but I'm not really concerned about the movement way up north. I'm more concerned here around the Santorini area. It looks like this earthquake, fairly recent, uh, 3.2. I believe that's the one showing up there on the seismograph station. A little bit of southward migration as well uh, towards the Santorini area. Of course, a uh, couple days ago, we had something on the seismograph stations there that looked like fluid movement uh, so let's go check out the latest recorded data here and uh, see what we have cook in there i don't see any fluid movement or harmonic trimmer they like to call it as well uh, just earthquake activity a number of threes and probably some fours in there as well uh, usgs really not showing anything though on their map uh, it looks right for now you know the intensity of this earthquake swarm uh calm ish but if you look back here, uh, i got to go back to the 14th. This is what I'm talking about here. Had about an hour and a half of continuous noise, uh, similar to what you would see at a volcano with fluid movement. Uh, and that's the only thing I can think of. It's not wind. It's not thunderstorms. It's, you know, that's something uh, moving underneath the ground there at a continuous rate. And then it came pretty much to a halt with a, uh, a short-lived pause and then a five-pointer kicked up. But since then, we haven't seen, we haven't had any other um, harmonic trimmer events there across the Santorini area. So uh, still watching it. I don't think this is over by a long shot. Uh, just got to uh, see how the next couple days play out. Uh, let's see what else we got here across. Oh, let me check out trimmer map here tonight for Cascadia trimmer. 99 epicenters of trimmer here at the extreme southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. That could be why we're seeing elevated seismic events here in Northern California. Notice the number of earthquakes up here due west and upstream here from where the trimmer is occurring. Uh, uh, trimmer is occurring obviously further right on the map if you look here, right? Uh, a little bit further away from the coast, but this is not surface activity. This is trimmer occurring down into the deeper areas of the Cascadia subduction zone, probably about 45 kilometers deep or so. When this takes place, <coughs> excuse me, that adds further strain upstream 
and that's what we're seeing here across the area of the southern end of the Cascadia uh, stress quakes being produced by that uh, Gorda plate being shoved underneath the North American region. Got to watch that. Could see a partial rupture here. We do get those partial ruptures in between uh, major events here. The last major full rupture was back in 1700, 325 years ago. Imagine how much strain's built up out here. All right, uh, let's go check out the rest of the globe here. See if my voice will be able to uh, handle it. A swarm of activity here on the Curl Cam Chat Trench. That's another major area for uh, some mega quake potential here soon. Been a long time since we've seen a, a decent sized earthquake there. Ankai trough, pretty quiet. A little bit of uh, continued movement across the Philippines there today, but overall, it looks like that swarm has died off. That area has been really active here in the last couple of days, but things taking a little break. Some deeper movement quakes there across the uh, Indonesia Islands area, which is back over here. Super deep earthquake. 324 miles deep. That's going to get things going here across the area these deeper quakes play a, a very important role in uh, the further strain out here across the region a little bit of a migration across the java trench northward a uh, number of fours and threes out here today across the himalayas north of the himalayas this is where the uh, uh that seven pointer struck here i think it's been over 30 days if i remember right yeah, it's been uh, well over 30 days. I can't remember the exact magnitude. I think it was 7.3, point, uh, 7 if I remember. But a uh, number of aftershocks kicking up there today. USGS showing one. The EMSC model showing a number of them out here. Uh, that's a little close. Uh, 3.2, there's that 3.2 showing up around the Santorini area. Notice that there's still a lot of earthquake activity occurring, folks. You know, some of those smaller... Just because the USGS is not showing anything uh, does not mean that everything's hunky-dory, right? They're not even showing any earthquake activity. But uh, there's still almost continued movement around the Santorini area. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot happening out there. Got, uh, well, Middle America Trench, South America area. Very typical on any given day. That's really... Not anything of abnormal activity there today. Uh, New Zealand region, some threes stretching out there. Deeper activity back building here across the Tonga Trench. <coughs> I'm pretty certain here we'll see some elevated activity in between these deeper regions here. Um, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu area, Fiji. This area should fill in quite nicely here soon. A uh, quick glance at the uh, Hawaii volcano, Kilauea volcano, which is still paused i believe uh, we'll check out the latest update here this was put out today the summit eruption there of kilauea remains paused another episode is likely within the next one to four days it's a rinse and repeat cycle folks same wording every single episode this next one will be number 10 and how they can tell another eruption is imminent within the next couple days well the de deformation data here there's our eruption there back on the, the 11th, short-lived, paused on the 12th, and since then we've been going back up. That's just been the cycle here. Uh, should be getting close here, it looks like, if they match the previous run-ups run in terms of inflation. Uh, we should see, yeah, probably uh, this time, maybe tomorrow night, maybe Sunday night, maybe early Monday morning, uh, we should see the return of an eruption there across Kilauea Volcano. As far as space weather activity goes, fairly boring out here, folks. There's really not a whole lot to look at. Um, I'm a big space weather guy, and nothing out here is uh, uh, interesting at all. Pretty quiet. Number of sunspots, but they are pretty wimpy. And, uh, well, uh, they're just defa they're degrading and kind of fading off into the sun so to speak little area back here across the eastern limb that uh, kind of got my eyes on that but really um, 
Yeah, there's some a lot of blue, green, yellow, orange, red. A lot of intermixing within that sunspot showing complexity uh, within 3996. Looks like another newer sunspot behind that. But um, yeah, if you had to twist, if you twisted my arm here and made me pick a sunspot, it's going to be this one right here. That may uh, be of an interest here in the coming days. These guys have a flare thread at 10%. I'm keeping mine low at 1% or less. M flare at 45. Fairly decent measurement there for M flare potential. Um, but aside from that, looks like a little bit of uh, aurora activity here tonight. Currently ongoing as of 10.33 p.m. That's California time. So it looks like uh, Alaska, Canada area, maybe the northern tier states. That... Uh, well, that wasn't really forecasted out here. Just uh, some high-speed solar wind stream there from a couple different coronal holes recently. And it looks like uh, the conditions there, as far as the BTBZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field, is in favor of allowing some of that solar wind stream to flow in and create these auroras tonight. So get outside if you get a chance there and you have clear skies. Maybe the northern tier states, Alaska, in Canada, obviously. Uh, Storm Prediction Center here. I want to see what we got for the storm reports today. Uh, as of right now, uh, no tornado reports there. As far as the preliminary data goes, a lot of wind, some hail reports as well, but nothing in terms of tornado activity. I did see a, a couple tornado warned storms there on... Uh, the radar imagery, but uh, you know that threat will continue. It looks like through the night, had a decent tornado chance. Mostly wind as well. That's crazy to see that much of a high risk for uh, wind damage. That's uh, yeah, that's pretty significant there across Alabama, Mississippi area, Louisiana, portions of Arkansas as well. So anywhere out there, uh, just stay weather aware. That's pretty crazy. Entering into that time of year where things uh, are intermixing. Uh, here in California, got uh, some rain overnight, looks like. A little bit more than what we were expecting. Probably about a tenth of an inch or so, but that's okay. Uh, and then a couple days break behind that. Cold air venturing down here across Oklahoma and Texas area. Bringing with it some snow. A uh, little storm system there as we head towards the middle of the week for California. And after that... Uh, yeah, it looks like a little break there for the West Coast. We'll have to check back on that as we get a little bit closer. All right, seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for now. Uh, no new earthquakes to report there. Let me double check the uh, uh, California area since it is lighting up. One earthquake up in Ridgecrest. Just keep an eye on it, folks. It's uh, uh, It's been elevated out here. I, I look at these maps 24-7, and it's... You know, it's not just one area. Say, for example, if it was only the San Jacinto Fault Zone showing, you know, some swarming and stuff like that, I wouldn't be so concerned. But, you know, it's that. It's the San Andreas Fault that's swarming. Malibu's kicking up. Ridgecrest. Um, Northern California swarming. We had the swarm on the Hayward Fault. It's just an overall pattern here of increasing pressure across the plate boundary. And what happens when you increase pressure? Well, you drastically increase the percentage and possibility here of seeing a larger earthquake take place. So just be prepared. Stay safe. That's all my voice has right now. I'm hoping it will go away. It's crazy how sick I've been this year. Uh, Health-wise, I'm fine, but the sickness, it's got to go. It's crazy. All right, uh, we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. I know I was supposed to do the Sunday or the uh Member drawing today, I got sidetracked, folks. I apologize. Uh, we'll get that in uh, check tomorrow. I don't have a time yet. I still have to put everyone that's a member, write them down on a ticket, and put them into a, a magic fishbowl and pick out a lucky winner tomorrow. But uh, we'll chat more about that in the morning. Have a good one, folks. Stay safe out there. Have a good night.